Welcome, dear viewers, to a great topic today in our series, Natural Medicine, which is the power of the subconscious. I have a great neuroscientist with me, an expert in this field, who also has wonderful solutions for it and has been offering them for decades now. Joshua Koberg is here today, and we're talking about all the topics that shape the subconscious. Hello, Joshua. Hello. Nice that you are here. I'm very happy. Yeah, me too. Especially when it comes to the subject of the subconscious. I immediately think this of this picture of the iceberg where only the little tip peeks out and underneath we have so much information that we consciously can't fall back on. And they shape our entire behaviour, our everyday life, our conflicts, even conflicts in relationships. Everything is shaped by it. And how did you come to deal with the subconscious? Well, I had a mentor, I think I mentioned it briefly in one of the other episodes, Vera F. Birkenbill, and she actually got me in this direction. I owe it to her that I then studied neuroscience, so that set the whole chain in motion. And the exciting thing for me was that I actually understood that via learning a language back then. So I came to her because I attended a management training course with my first company, where she took part, and then somehow she said in a subordinate clause, that anyone who can speak fluently in their mother tongue can speak in any other language. And then I thought, huh? So it has been proven that I'm too stupid to speak English. I came out of school. I don't understand anything. I can't speak anything. And that won't happen either. That was actually my deep inner conviction. And actually, I got to know her personally two years later. So we met for a day. I had booked a coaching with her. And that was actually life-changing for me. So something started for me when I understood that pure conscious thinking, I'd never dealt with coaching or anything before, that pure conscious thinking is actually the smallest component in our life. When thinking consciously, we're actually talking about 15 millimeters processing speed like a slow walk, and that pre-conscious and unconscious level, in comparison, that's 11 kilometers, where we move data at twice the speed of sound. So incredibly fast, incredibly deep. And then, exciting for me, the expansion of what I was able to learn in university is that we actually can't access unconscious programs at all, analytically. So that means there are a lot of coaching methods. I don't want to question it or anything. I, I just want to say, in fact, any coaching on the pre-conscious and unconscious level is pointless when I do it analytically. So that means I can't get to the levels without the feeling. And that's interesting for me. A question has crystallized over the last 20 years that I face several times a day. I always ask myself, if something is going weird or going very well, what kind of feeling does it make? And the interesting thing is that there are actually pearl necklaces, so to speak, hanging on a feeling, which then reach back somewhere to the beginning of our life. And if I now, let's say, had a bad experience on my fifth day of life here on Earth, and I don't logically recognize that as a toddler, because I, I can only feel, I, I can't think analytically at all, then I'll kind of recharge this feeling over and over and over again. So now, for example, I've experienced something that makes me unable to maintain a relationship in some form then I'll experience this over and over again. So maybe first with my brothers and sisters, maybe then at school, maybe with close relatives, then as a teenager with first contacts with partners. And then this ball is actually getting bigger. And that's the problem. So that means the older I get, the more severe these things become. An example from life now. I had a good friend and her parents had to leave her with her grandma when she was two in Romania and came here to work. And she is not able to have a relationship because of this conflict. How do we get there that we can then heal that in this, that we go into this two-year-old, relive or feel this pain? 
Was gibt's da für What kind of methods are there and how can you work with your technology? Exactly. In the first step, we'd look at a, a coaching approach. What happened there, so what feeling was created. This can be done relatively easily using kinesiological tests. So, muscle tests. We would ask what she's actually produced for herself. So, her experience. If you were to ask her today analytically now, she would say, yes, my parents, they had to work. Exactly. She was with grandma, that's okay, but the pain is still present. Exactly. Another question is what happened there when she was two years old. Does she just have a feeling of abandonment? Has she perhaps felt a, a break in the relationship? Or maybe she took responsibility for her parents when she was two years old. There are so many different constellations. Then we'd actually only find out what is your imprint. So what did you build up in terms of feeling? And we'd approach this feeling also with a, a coaching technique and would take out this energetic charge. Now I could also go there via the health if I now find out about the person. She has, I don't know, a stroke or something. Can that also be related to this conflict from this two-year-old? And how can that be? Exactly. You'd then have to make a comparison using the organ theory. That means we have to look, where does she now have a specific disease? So which organ is affected? How is it affected? And from that, I can draw a conclusion about the trauma that's behind this stroke, for example. So that's a bit more complex system, but there are professionals who do something like that. We also have them in our company. To decode, great. So that, that's all relatively easy to do. I would love this topic. I could talk about it for hours because it's just it's so awesome the way our body shows us everything and again on the other side how important childhood is and on the other hand i think as a mother for god's sake what am i doing but i mean that's part of the life issue if, if you look at it in terms of personal responsibility, then if we have children, but we actually get, gave them everything so that they can develop in the best way. Being able to live out your life issues. Exactly like that. Perceived correctly. And with that in mind, I say, okay, well, then you don't get into this guilt conflict issue. Exactly. That's also something we have a lot of, often standard programming. Pro programming. The subject of guilt is definitely a collective issue in Germany anyway. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have been reincarnated here at all. But we also have a big topic, which is finances, money, how we feel about money. And there I also see... In the USA, they ask, how do you make your money? That's cool or awesome or terrific. So there is always, money is something great. That's what people talk about. We don't have that like that. It's always something negative or you don't do that. What kind of experience do you have when it comes to money? I've had similar experiences. So I also had massive patterns on it. Also very exciting. I was brought up very religiously. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And I left it as a, as a young man. I separated from this religion because it just wasn't coherent for me. But of course I have, and of course I have to say that right away. I have very exciting programming on the negative side. But I have, have at least as much, if not much more, positive programming. In fact, this idea of Christ, in other words, the New Testament, is, is excellent. Such high values that are conveyed. On the other hand, we have a lot of fear, guilt programs. And of course, money was also an issue for me. A rich man has a harder time getting into the kingdom of God than a camel getting through the eye of a needle and, and, and such sayings. And they're quite tough. But the interesting thing is, if you just take all the programming collectively. One has experienced a family bankruptcy, the second, like me, maybe with some religious background. The third may have been fired at a young age and got into trouble. It doesn't really matter where that comes from. The interesting thing is that we can actually describe unconscious programming very easily. I'll do it with the money. So if I have a room, we're now here in a studio. There's an air conditioning system that sets, well, 
off, let's say, to 20 degrees. Now, I would open this studio, so the AC is running, I would let fresh air in here. It would be 30 degrees outside, then the room temperature would slowly increase, let's say, to 25 degrees. Then I close everything again, then the thermostat ensures it, I get back to 20 degrees, and it goes in all directions, whether cooled or heated. So if a person has a programming for two and a half thousand euros a month, and I now say the extreme example, they win the lottery. Then suddenly they have a million or 40 million, no matter whatever. Their thermostat is set to two and a half thousand euros. So the first thing that they would have to do with the money would be to get coaching so that they would deal with 40 million. But of course nobody does that because nobody knows. This is such a sudden aspect. Now there's a lot of money, but the thermostat does everything to get back to two and a half thousand a month. And that's fascinating. I can prove that with numbers too. Looking at the lottery millionaires, we know for 99% the money is gone after two to three years, no matter how much. So that's fascinating. And it actually shows the power of our unconscious level. So our system that we unconsciously live is what we guarantee, is what guarantees our survival. And if something is added that doesn't fit in, whether that's positive or negative, it will be eliminated because it doesn't seem to serve our concept of survival. Yes, of course, it is now a core issue in finance. I also had a case. It came out in a summary with a man who never got beyond a certain level, that he showed solidarity with his father. He just made it to that point. And beyond that, there was no chance. Frequent topic, don't get better than your father. Really? Oh yes, quite often. And how do you solve that? So actually, every man you get to know as a woman should tackle this issue. Also the other way around, as a man you would first have to make sure... <laughs> no, just kidding. It's nice when you do it together. I mean, we both have our experience of relationships. And we are both very interested in the subject, of course. And if you have a partner who is not so convinced, then of course it is difficult. Then it'll get separated too. So that would be an exciting topic for a very, it's a very own episode. We do that. How couples work. So how type C personalities work. There are very, very fascinating things. Let's do it. I'm all for it. Right away after this one. So if you look at the subject of money and say, okay, I can't be better than my father, then I would actually have to talk to the client. For example, when you say a, a summary or some form of coaching process where I get that consciously. And then I can actually hand the responsibility back to my father. So I just have to realize he has his life. It's good for him. Just as it is. He's the big one. I'm the little one. So, and, and now I've turned 18 or 20, let's say. Now I'm making my own life. Now I decide how my life works. And then I can resolve such a conflict. Okay. If it's spilled over into the second generation, or better said, into the third, and the son, let's say, is now 19, realizes his father has not resolved the issue with his father, then he just has to deal with the topic. But he also chose this line of ancestors to live through this conflict. Exactly. I also wondered, for a long time, why I ended up with such an extremely religious-oriented family. So today, I know that. Of course, I have to say I'm 47, so that means at 19, I couldn't have recognized it. Not even at 25, probably not even at 30. I always worked on that from my mid-20s, but of course, looking back today, I, I got a lot further. But there is this beautiful saying from Oscar Wilde, we live forwards so that we can understand it backwards. So everything that I experience, I reflect back. Backwards. Or, Steve Jobs put it so nicely, connecting the points. So look at your points, actually look at your pearl necklace over and over again. This is something that a lot of people don't like to do. They don't like to reflect. Because you can feel the pain, and that's it. Many are really scared of feeling inside because if you meet your dad, maybe he has already died. Then in the meeting you relive again. That sadness or that loss. But after that, you are, of course, in a freedom that you can't even put into words. It's really 
No more ballast, so this load is simply gone. And above all, no responsibility for what my parents do. And my parents have no responsibility for me either. But we're adults and everyone basically solves their issues. Must also come to terms with the decisions. That, that's logical. So that means when I make decisions, I always pay. So for everything I do in life, I pay, positive or negative. There's such a nice concept with these seven-year rhythms. I don't know if you've heard that before, that life runs in seven-year rhythms. From the age of 49 onwards, you'll have a, a turnaround and, and then you'll either pay back the loans or you'll get, you'll get payments. So that can't be avoided for anyone. But I can't repay anything for my father or my mother or my children or my wife or receive it for them. This is just actually exclusively my own game. And that's also the point. When we talk about such unconscious processes, it's easy to see there's actually only one approach that I can change and, and that it's me. And when I change, when I make myself the best possible person, then suddenly I become more valuable for my wife, for my father, for my mother, for my children, for my brother, for my employees, no matter whom, because I designed the best life I can design for myself. And so I describe it as an effect, why it makes sense to bring yourself into the resonance again and again. Especially with women, are there also classic subconscious programs that we now have here in our society that you see again and again? Oh, quite often, of course. There are a lot about relationship issues that men also have in the same way. You have to say that. They just live it out differently. So that's very, very exciting. Well, uh, let me say an intimate relationship is actually the most intimacy we can allow. And if there are trauma behind it, then, in the worst case, they are uh, shown through totally blatant behaviors, so extreme sexual inclinations or behavior, wanting to control people and so on. Well, uh, there are really obvious stories there. I, I'm not a psychologist, but of course I keep coming across this topic. And you can say that out of 10 people we meet, two are really mentally disturbed. That's an issue. So if I'm aware of that, then I just have to be clear how I want to deal with it. And I don't want to judge people, but I have to decide for myself, is that something that I would like to have in my environment? And if I might have chosen someone like that as a partner, simply out of sexual attraction, and then after half a year or after a year I realise that I'm actually in a relationship with a mentally ill person, then I'd actually have to think about how to proceed. Do I want that? Then, of course, I can be the healer here and say, I'll help that a solution takes place until I realise that I can't do that at all. But if 20 years have passed, it's just really bitter. Although speaking about the subject of personal responsibility, you can also take a look at this principle. What does that trigger in me? Well, I now have a mentally ill partner, but they trigger something in me. Anger or aggression or sadness. And I can only reflect on that by asking what kind of feeling it is. So what does it do to me? And then I can make a decision. Yes, and with women and finances, because we had that earlier on finance, I could imagine programs running there too. I also know that for me, when you are married, of course, you have this, oh God, I'll never make it a loan program, or you can't survive without a man. What other things are there? So I think we have a collective issue, women and finance. That's always very interesting for me. If you just look at the salary structure, then we have in fact still a, a difference between men and women with the same performance. This is of course a cultural issue. I mean, if you think about it, that somehow, I don't even know it's been 40 or 45 years since her husband had to sign that the wife was allowed to work. Yes, it was in 69, I think. Well, that's weird. And, and if you think about the period in, in which it happened, there's just collective patterns behind it. But basically, I'd say it doesn't matter again whether man or woman. The question is, am I worth it that I can have this? Or do I have a connection? For example, I'd rather give my money than my life. So that's a very common link. So a premonition of death when I own too much. These are also ancestral structures. So at some point, one of my ancestors was killed for a lot of money and then it's stuck in the family. 
It really has to be said that these are very individual patterns. I had this too, now that you're saying it. From before, I had something like that too when I had earned a lot of money. I was afraid that I would lose it. And I had an expropriation in my ancestors. And that's exactly when this fear comes up in you. For God's sake, not too much now. Someone comes and takes that away from me and then I'm poor all of a sudden. And that's interesting. These are feelings that are actually totally unrealistic. And it's the feelings in the ancestral line. So these are not ours, but we've taken something from someone and continue to live it. And that's fascinating. I think so too. This is really my favorite topic. <laughs> and on the subject of the subconscious, if you now say, children have their topics, but when would you say it makes sense to exchange ideas with children on the subject of the subconscious? Is there any experience? Do they use the news? You developed a system that can be worn on the skin to solve such conflicts or unconscious programming. For example, now I have a classic case. I know for sure my son, he wrote my final exams with me. So I gave birth four weeks after my graduation, so that means he's scared of exams. He got that that 180% straight away. Can I now proactively say, well, I definitely know that there was a case or there are, for example, accidents with families or a death where you are definitely sure that burdened the child at the time. Divorce, another classic. How could you then get to the subconscious? So actually you could even, as a parent or, or a mother, of course, that's much stronger than a father. So you could actually start immediately when the child is still small enough. But because then you're so energetically connected with the child. If you solve such a topic, it will solve it for the child. After puberty, it becomes more difficult because then we develop our own personalities. We're still living the patterns from the mother or from the father or from the grandparents or from the expropriation 300 years ago. But in the end, we already have our own connection to the topic, so to speak. We can face the issues ourselves. Exactly. The, the child should actually also have this awareness of saying, OK, I have exam stress. If he says that as a 15-year-old, then you'll be able to work on it. I've developed a, a mental training for smaller children that basically just irons out the subject of school. The mental training is called School is Stupid, because I actually think that school is stupid. Yes, I think we have the same background there. Then, then it's followed by, or isn't it, question mark. And what we do with this mental training, for example, that really works for third, fourth, fifth grade, is a, a, a mental setting that clearly shows that I am not learning for the teacher, I'm not learning for the mother, not for the father, only for myself. And when a child understands that, it's very playful. It's also spoken by children for children. Then something very interesting happens. OK, so I can use it as headphones for my child or what? That also goes through the news. Subconsciously through the skin. Subconsciously through the skin. And does the child still have to actively listen to something? Exactly. In the evening, to fall asleep, there's a guided meditation. Where that happens through the skin in the subconscious realignment is connected to consciousness. So then I can also do such patterns. I mean, we've all got them. I've also heard lectures from you that you really say, not all teachers, but most of them, make you feel like you're stupid when you get out of this school system and you're actually fit for nothing. So that's how I had the experience and as I've heard from you too. Is there also a story in there that if you have been made to look small by teachers, that you can already treat that? Exactly, because you get it from, so we're talking about most of the teachers, and again, completely neutral, we're talking about extremely frustrated people. I volunteered to give lectures at schools for three years. And when I found out what headmasters have to do, they're actually caretakers. They have to take care of everything. And they should also teach children. They're only put under pressure. They're, they're confronted with parents who think they are smarter than the teacher. That such a person is frustrated. All children are gifted. Yes, everyone's gifted. We'll become a manager. And I have to be honest, I never wanted to be a teacher. Because of that, I have a great understanding of this profession. 
profession. And we should actually, if you look at it socially, we should do three things, like it was 100 years ago, teachers, pastors and doctors. They should have the highest authority in town, and then it would be settled. Then neither a parent would chatter stupidly with the teachers, nor would a child dare to behave the way they do. That's why they're in such a field of tension. But of course, out of this we now got programming for children that didn't exist in the past. Because if I have a completely disaffected person as a teacher, what do they convey? It's logical. Then I have a child with programming. And of course, I can solve that. I should solve it if the child becomes aware of it. Oh well, our time is up again. We could still go on for hours, so we will definitely do the topic of children in school. Relationships is also still an issue, but the subconscious has already been a good insight. We can build on that. Thank you, dear Joshua, for being here, and see you soon. See you soon. Dear viewers, you can see here how the subconscious really gets reflected through all life situations, again and again. And the valuable thing is simply that we ourselves have the opportunity to take responsibility to, for ourselves to find a solution for us. And I hope you were able to take something out of our conversation. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.